Kelly's here, yay. I'll answer all your questions about point shoes in a moment. Um, Mr. Grishko's here as well. Hi, Mr. Grishko, welcome. Um, so we're now gonna go live with Alison Bonus. So let's get her up one moment. Let me just find her. Okay, here we go. Hello. Hey, how are you? Welcome. I'm good, thank you. Um, happy Mother's Day, by the way, because it's the oh, US thanks. Mother's Day, isn't it? <laughs> how has your day been going so far? Um, it was great. I actually woke up and had a private lesson with a really promising student. So I, I spent the morning doing ballet um, here in our garage. But my husband actually built us, I don't know if anyone can see, but a sprung floor. Oh, we wow. Yeah. That so is super we have, cool. Yeah, we have like basically a studio in our house right now. Um, so it's pretty cool. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, someone's yeah. already dropped in about um, Breaking Point. I knew that would come up like instantly. I too watched Breaking Point and I really loved it. <laughs> um, so I I'll, love, in, I'll go into I my love, first question about it, I guess. What, what was it like filming it? Do you miss it? Do you miss um, being part of like a reality show? <laughs> you know, so um, I don't think a lot of people know this, but when we first were pitched the idea of Breaking Point, uh -huh. um, it, BC. So they actually came to Ballet West and said, we'd love to um, film a docu-series. And um, so that intrigued us. We we're like, this is wonderful. We're going to bring ballet into the homes of, you know, millions of people. We're on board mm -hmm. for this. Um, so some of us got interviewed um, in the very early process of it. And actually, my entire interview was about me being a college graduate. So oh. I actually started um, my professional career, my first professional performance was my 24th birthday. So I did not have a normal, um, I don't know, path to being professional because I had went to college first. And you know, it's, it's slowly changing. This was literally 2006. But uh -huh. we'd often hear, you can't go to college and have a career, you're going to be too old, it would never work out. Sure, so uh -huh. I I wanted my story to be about that. And I remember only talking about that, but somehow they found out about my relationship with Rex, who's now my husband. Yes. <laughs> but if you watch the show, you know, I had, I was in a relationship, a serious relationship at the time. So the BBC sold it to the CW. Uh huh. And it turned into what you guys saw, which was basically reality TV ballet uh -huh. version turned into um, about my personal life, mostly. <laughs> and so, um, you know, at the time, you guys, it was super stressful to um, open up my life like that. Yeah. It was and us uh, mentally, and it really wasn't what we thought we signed up for. But oh. um, amazing support system, my family encouraged me to kind of, you know, go with the flow. And I was also considered the bad girl on the show. I'm not sure how, <laughs> you know, like I was the mean girl. And I remember episode one happening and the producers calling me and they're like, we're sorry, but we thought you could handle it. I was like, what guys? So we never saw any of the footage before they would air it. Oh no, really? Really? So imagine this, it was the first episode season one and it's opening night of a performance for a Ballet West series that we were doing. And I was taking company class and um, I got a phone call from my family. And they were like, I mean, not a phone call. I had 50 missed calls. And I was like, what happened? I thought something terrible happened. And they called and they're like, you need to go to the newsstand and buy Us Weekly. And I was like, Us Weekly? What? So I, <laughs> there's an entire page with my face that says like the B word of reality TV, the new, you know, Oh my uh, God, I, was I like, never knew this. Out to be. So wow. I, I know, but you know what it did for me is um, it opened up an opportunity to um, a lot of interviews. So yes. I was kind of un pushed out to the press um, more often. And although that was very stressful and it was hard to read what people are saying about me on social media, oh, I God. believe I would have Artie Motion, my company, without it. So, you know, having the press and, um, you know, the publicity from the show helped me with a future. And yes. so 
I have to tell you, like, I'm so thankful for the experience. Rex and I are married. We have a child together. Yes. Um, <laughs> you guys just happen to see that part of our lives that we all go through, like young love, <laughs> insane and obsessive and all that crazy stuff. But, you know, we grew up and here we yeah, are. Yeah. So, you know, I don't, I love the experience. I would do it again. Um, it's, you know, it is what it was. And I'm proud of it. Right. Even the totally. crazy. Um, I hope that. <laughs> You know what I show in on, uh, you know, on my social media. Um, thank you, uh, out there. But the, you know how I show myself on social media. I I feel like you know, gives the truth. Yes, absolutely agree with that. Um, I'm just going to get my notes up because they're on my other laptop. With this double stream, I have to have two laptops running and a phone. It's hilarious. No, it's hard. <laughs> and I oh, hope you're able to save this video because I've been. I am. Yes. Yes, definitely. Would, would you send it to me because my yeah, phone? Of course. All right, cool. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> it's always good because what we do is then we can upload them to YouTube, to Facebook, to IGTV. You can upload it as well. And we can get more information out there, um, which is great. Let's just save this and move it over. One moment. Okay. Got it. Whilst I'm doing this, guys, feel free to put any questions for. Addison in the um, comments. Um, I'm just going to move this file. Hi, everyone. <laughs> um, we love you too, guys. Such sweet people out there. I love the fact that nowadays with the internet, there's so much that we can do. And um, you know, it's just so awesome that we can connect with so many people around the world. Yeah, I know. Everybody is being really, um, and I understand, it's hard what we're all going through. Um, but I'm not really struggling with it. And, um, you know, immediately I felt the need to adapt. And so that's why we have um, a studio in our garage. And Art Emotion from day one has offered, you know, a free Instagram um, class every day. Yes, I've been doing some of them. <laughs> cool. Yeah, and, you know, we're, we do open class is private lessons we're still doing our summer intensives two out of the three are virtual but the third one we just got news we can talk about this we're doing in person but you know it's like i have made connections with people that um i don't think i would have otherwise um and i think people are getting to take class from people that they may not have ever had that yeah. chance uh-huh so i'm just encouraging people to stay positive and also know that um like anything that you guys are doing at home matters. So it's like, we're still working hard. We're trying to improve ourselves and it all matters even when we're yes. home. Mm -hmm. And I want people to, to keep that mindset and that also it's okay to take a day off if you don't feel yeah, like. Right. It. Absolutely. You know, cause I know like dance magazine had, a, um, they unloaded a um, article about how they felt actually more pressure now that we're all online to just kind of keep up and i'm thinking to myself guys no we're in control of ourselves like mm -hmm. if you take it off if you need a break take it um if you feel really you know motivated take advantage of that too yeah absolutely um, I'm from it all so i'm i love it i'm having a great time <laughs> it's wonderful and i like the fact that during this downtime we have time to do other stuff as well that we wouldn't usually have time to do um, which has benefited me greatly, not only just personally, but also as a business, because it means I get more time to work on, you know, things to do with my YouTube channel and all the little fine details and offering virtual fittings as well to people that, you know, can't get to me um, and being able to send shoes out and whatever. It's, it's been really great for that. Um, yeah. Let's have a little scroll. Right. You've adapted, you know, you have to adapt or you don't adapt. Yes. And that's how I'm looking at it, because that's what I did with Artie Motion. I just said to myself, like, I can either keep the same business model and struggle or learn to do something new. And Absolutely. so congratulations. And, um, you know, we're just trekking on. Totally. Um, the CA cyclist has actually got a question there that's on my notes anyway. They say, Alison, when did you start taking classes in ballet? When did you know you wanted to be a ballet dancer? Okay. So um, I actually started when I was three years old. My mom put me in ballet lessons and also gymnastic lessons. And um, she, I think at some point asked me what I wanted to do. And I guess I didn't want to do gymnastics and I wanted to stick with ballet. Um, 
Weirdly enough, you guys, I was actually, I was, so I was born breech. So I was born, you know, the wrong direction. Uh -huh. My feet actually were all the way rotated backwards. No way. Yeah. So I actually wore braces for almost, you know, nine months of my life to try uh -huh. to get my, and my mom said there was one crazy doctor um, that, you know, wanted to maybe break my legs and reset them. Oh, wow. Another doctor looked at her and said, no, she's going to be a ballerina. Just we'll wear braces. And like, and then it came out to be true. And it's just so <laughs> weird. Um, that is crazy. Yeah. So I have really weird legs. They're very bowed and strange. Uh -huh. And it's hard sometimes, but um, yeah. So, but you know, I want to just tell people if they don't know this about me. So when I was in eighth grade, so my um, parents had got a divorce and my mom was remarried. And uh -huh. so in eighth grade, she got pregnant with my um, little sister. And I was supposed to go to SAB that summer. And I looked at my mom and I said, I'm not going away. And this is ballet obsessed Allison. And she's like, what? Be here for when my sister's being born. Um, are you there? Oh, sorry. Yeah. It just froze for a moment. I don't know why. <laughs> um, I said, I want to be there for my sister being born. I, I also want to go to high school and be normal. You guys, I was a cheerleader. I was on drill team. I quit from eighth grade until 11th grade. I did not do ballet. Wow. Oh my God. I never knew this. Yeah. So I, you know, that's a huge reason um, why I actually ended up going to college because I had missed so much time. And, you know, my mom really, my parents encouraged me to go to school. Um, uh -huh. They did not want me to do that, but I did. Um, so, you know, I did not again have a traditional route to being professional. Um, and I have to be honest with you, I struggle with that still these days. Um, you know, when I was younger, ballet was very natural for me. And I remember when I came back after taking so much time off, I felt, um, I felt like I was really behind. Uh -huh. And so this day, I wondered if, you know, I'm a first soloist with ballet West. I'm really proud of that. But I wonder if I never took any time off, if I would have been a principal earlier in my life, maybe. I get um, Yeah, sure. Those are things that I deal with. But you know, I have an amazing career. And so it's like, we do that to ourselves. Um, just remember that um, every decision you make matters in some way in your life. And that's sort of like where yes. I feel like I'm supposed to be at Bally West because I'm supposed to marry Rex and have my son. And it's like, maybe I wouldn't have been on that path had I just, yeah, right. So, totally. you know, it's, I don't know, the older I get, the wiser I get. So absolutely. I agree with that. I feel that a lot. <laughs> especially once you hit your 30s I think that's when you really truly like start wising up properly in my opinion <laughs> true I mean I'm 36 I'm gonna be 37 in November so I'm like I'm getting closer to 40 these days <laughs> <laughs> do you find that's led me on to another question actually um so when you're getting older and with ballet and point work in general um does it feel harder to you do you feel that your body changes? I mean, obviously, um, having a baby, that makes a difference also. Um, but have you personally found it harder as you get older? Or do you find it easier? Like, what's your own personal experiences with that? So um, having a baby um, really changed a lot for me. Um, and that was a struggle. So, you know, like I said, I always felt like ballet was natural for me. So I'm, you know, I, I'm a pretty flexible individual. Um, so like, I never really had to worry about that, even coming back after a baby and stuff like that. But you know, the strength really was lost after mm -hmm. losing your floor. We don't need to get into all of that. Um, so I also didn't realize um, that like coming back after having a baby, I, I didn't recognize it in myself, but I felt like I was also dealing with like postpartum depression. And I wasn't really honest about that. Mm -hmm. So whenever I'm coming back, you know, with Ajax coming back from Ajax. So I started back in rehearsals four months after, after having him. Um, guys, I gained 70 pounds with my son and I don't generally um, like fluctuate weight. So I, I kind of stay the same, but I gained 70 pounds with my son. So um, that, that alone was hard to deal with. So I'm coming back trying to find my body again. And I was very frustrated and I thought to myself, I would never get back to where I felt like I could be. And this lasted an entire year. So Ajax was born in December. Mm -hmm. It was December Nutcracker. And, you know, I'm doing classical ballet and I'm like, I can't do this. I, I could not ever feel my body again. And I was getting frustrated and I was crying and I was getting upset, truthfully. Mm -hmm. um, what has been amazing about quarantine 
is I'm in this studio six hour, hours a day doing private lessons, honestly. I started at 8 a.m. Wow. Um, and I am discovering new ways of working that um, is fixing problems that I thought I had post baby. And I realized it's just about um, engaging the proper muscles. So here I am for an entire year and a half thinking that my back was, was messed up because of having a baby. And I realized I was compensating um, because I was, I was not very strong in those places after having a child. Mm -hmm. So I was engaging the wrong muscles and it felt like it was, you know, like bone structure. Oh, wow. And here I, like, I mean, I feel like I'm getting better in quarantine because I'm able to slow down and work slower. Yes. And so a lot of the times these kids um, and parents are asking me like, how are you going to improve at home if you're not taking a full class? And I truly honestly mean this. Um, half the time we shouldn't even be off the bar. Mm -hmm. You know, always slow down and get at, get to bar and like really hone in on technique mm -hmm. and what I'm doing every day for myself, what I'm doing with my students and also what like any of our virtual summer intensives are going to be about. Like we will never have this time again to slow down and like hone yes. in on. We will never have this again. Definitely um, agree I, with that. Yeah. Unless we take time to do it, which we don't. Yeah. We're all busy. Um, so, you know, that's my I answer. You can totally. I mean, like I've even said to students who were worried, you know, about point work saying, oh, you know, I'm not going to have my point classes now. I can only do a little bit from home, depending on the floor they've got and whatever. And I just said to them, look, think about the basics of point work. Think about working on your strength and your alignment and the simple stuff. You know, if you haven't got a decent floor, just do what you can. Don't overdo it. Don't do it to the extent you're going to get hurt. Right. Yeah. Um, but just take your time with it and think about this time as a time to really perfect those little details so that when you do get back in the studio, you haven't lost anything per se, but actually you've gained things that you wouldn't usually have gained. Yes. You know, so, um, that we work on in point class here in our virtual classes, um, is, you know, people, my floor is slippery. Oh, hang on. It's froze. Why I promise. That? Oh, that's okay. I'll, um, I'll, okay. Um, what I, what I want to say to most of those people is the reason why we slip out is because we're not getting up over our box. Mm -hmm. When we don't get all the way over our box, we're on the inside of the bottom of the shoe and we go sliding out. So yeah. one of the things we're really working on in point class is, you know, we often hear, you know, straighten your knees, but a part of the leg that we don't think about is behind the knee, the back of the leg. Yes. Yes. We're working on straight, strengthening and straightening the back of the knee, but opposition, and that's your ankle. So that's how you get the ballet look. You know, you're thinking on, on the top of your shoe, your knee is straightening from behind, and the okay. top was pushing out against it forward. And I don't that's mean very thickling, I'm talking straight out. So we're working like that. We're working um, really slow, like articulating, and I call it through like on the floor, quarter, half, three yes. quarter. So all the crucial. way and you <laughs> so crucial. where you can have like allow momentum to bring you up into point we stop it and we literally think about the bottoms of the foot and every muscle bringing those toes up yeah underneath. i watched um, a point class you did actually that was working on that and i was doing it at home myself because um it also reminded me of some other classes by lynn charles because she focuses a lot on that as well because i don't know if you know but um sometimes especially in adult classes they tend to be a bit more slack with adults when they really shouldn't. And what I find is even as a point shift, when I'm going to these classes to try and do the class myself, I'm often looking at people and thinking, oh my God, why are they not using their whole foot? Why are they just springing onto point when they should be working every little part? Yeah. Um, you know, and okay, sometimes they are reading correct shoes that aren't helping them. But a lot of the time it's because they've not been taught to articulate every single part of their foot. I mean, we don't, we have an adult intensive every year, a summer intensive, um, a week long in Salt Lake oh, City. Nice. We were supposed to add a week into uh, Cleveland, Ohio, but obviously all those plans got ixnay. That's why we're going virtual. So we're still having our uh, adult summer intensive virtually. But I agree with you. Just because somebody is an adult dancer, there are people who just are being introduced to ballet or people who used to be ballet dancers and they come back. That doesn't mean they get just kind of a free all that's not fair no it isn't 
you have to approach the work the same as a young student. And that's what we exactly. do. And you know, one of the things that I often talk about in my classes, um, my teacher used to teach us that when we pointed our feet, our toes stayed long. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to just show you my really yeah, dirty toes. But for everybody out there, what this means is, is like, even on point, can you see my toes are long, like a nice lot length and no this. curling or crunching. Yeah. So, it's so vital. We talk, yeah, we talk a lot about that. Like, even when you're pointing your foot in, in general, just with ballet yeah. shoes on, that you're not, you know, you're not curling your toes. Sorry, no. You're this not curling of, like um, this. One of the things that bothers me when I fit shoes, actually, sometimes I get dancers that have even been on point a long time, but because their teachers have not taken the time to um, look at their actual bare feet and see what's going on in their slippers, they're coming to me and they're, I get into a tondu and I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, can you lengthen your toes, please? And then they can't do it. So I end up actually sending them home with exercises to do. And sometimes I even, if it's really bad, and I notice he's having problems in point shoes. I get him to go to a dance physio to really get it sorted out. Because yeah. um, for those watching that aren't, haven't done point yet, um, I cannot stress how important it is that everything works together with your body. We're not yeah. just, it's not just feet and ankles. It's your whole body, guys. So just because you think to yourself, well, I've got strong feet and ankles now. I'm ready for point work. It, it doesn't work like that. And you know, I mean, you're talking about even like the pelvic floor use. And we talk mm -hmm. about this in our classes it's like it's hard for young kids to understand what the pelvic floor is we don't sure. even explain uh -huh. how we explain it is basically you know your lower abs are the center of your body so every time you do a plie even though it's impossible you're lifting that up and you're not allowing it to come with you in the rest of your legs yeah and so you're, you're you're building the strength and you're getting all of that weight out of your ankles and your feet mm -hmm. and i agree here, here's my opinion, and some people may hate it, but the way that our technique is evolving, speed is like the thing that everybody wants. Everyone, everybody oh, wants faster, faster, faster. And that's amazing, but that comes after you've mastered slow. Yes. Because what's starting to happen is speed is being introduced too soon. So we're compensating mm -hmm. to get the work done, and the, and the basis of like our technique is mm -hmm. getting completely lost. Thank and so these kids it's are getting, great. yeah, I mean, they're getting hip injuries, knee injuries, ankle yes. injuries. Like, I've never heard in my lifetime as a child of like people having serious surgeries at such young ages. Yes. Oh my gosh. You are totally right about that. Yeah. So it just bothers me. And, and this is like, you know, with RD motion, we're so dedicated to this because it's like, it matters to me. Yeah. That's so and good. That's so refreshing. And I'm, Exactly. I'm back to stage. I felt like I was back at square one again after having my son. So I'm right with the beginner ballet people again. I'm being serious. So it's like, it matters to me still as a professional dancer at my age. And so that's how we teach. That's really nice. It's great to hear that people, um, you know, take the adults seriously as well. Because, I mean, I travel a lot. So I do a lot of dropping classes and I go to different schools and studios and see what they teach. And, you know, I'll pick different things up, which is great. But sometimes yeah. I walk into some studios and I'm just like, what is going on here? You know, there's people on point that shouldn't even be on point. There's, oh, I just see it all once. It's scary. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I think I think that's hard um, nowadays too. So this is also just my opinion. But um, when I was younger, I felt like, what happened in the ballet studio was like between the teacher and the student and the parents weren't as involved. Mm -hmm. And I understand now, now that I'm a parent, I, I want to know what's happening. Um, I would want to know, but there also has to be a level of trust between like the teacher and the parent as well. And I feel like sometimes um, the need to keep up with the peers, like, so a kid and who has a peer who might be in a certain place with their technique um, they feel the pressure and it's really sad to have to keep up with that. So sometimes mm -hmm. kids are pushed along a little too soon. Yes. Uh -huh. And I hate that. I hate that on so many levels. I hate that for how the parents feel. I hate yeah. that, especially for how the kids feel, because that is a horrible feeling. Um, so I think that sometimes teachers get pressured into, um, into it. Um, and I feel sorry for the teachers too. So I, I, I know there are so many wonderful teachers out there who know what's right. But at the same time, you know, 
the relationship with a parent, they also have to respect that as well because the parents are paying for these lessons. There's so many layers to it. Do you know what? This is this would be a, a really amazing topic to do for YouTube, actually. That would be a really good one because it's not spoken about often enough. Um, and I get so many parents that email me every day and common questions like, basically, I've got a daughter and she's got a friend and they're the same age and they've been doing ballet the same amount of time, but her friend's on point and my daughter isn't and I want to know why. And they start to really like go into like, so they're like really bothered by it. And then I, I always like take a moment to break it down for them that it's not just about because they're the same age or they're the same level. I mean, here in England, it's a little different. We are very obsessed with um, associations of ballet and doing ballet exams. So yeah. um, like RAD, VAT, the IST, there's so many of them. And yeah. one of the things that um, they really obsess about here is doing these exams and seeing them as a guideline for how good a dancer is, which is so bad because it does not make a dancer, in my opinion. Um, a dancer is someone who, you know, is a dancer. They've got that mentality, the musicality, the technique, the stamina, the um, everything that goes into it. It's not just about, oh, you've done this great. That makes you a great dancer because it just doesn't. And yeah. I wish this country would stop obsessing about ballet exams because it really makes no difference. You know, it's, and... it's, a, it's a fine line because I, I understand there has to be some kind of system, but then this is, also, this is also where like the conversation about like, what are we first? Are we artists? Mm -hmm. um, because if you look at old, the people that we adore, the people that we want to be, they just danced like maybe their posses when they did eight pirouettes wasn't up you know all the way up above their knees but nobody cared True. nobody cared because True. they were so captivating and at this point um i think it's harder for kids um the technique that's being asked you know it's really difficult and so what happens is they get bogged down even us we get bogged mm -hmm. down with the technical aspect yes. of the ever-evolving technique yes. of, you know, the more turns, the higher legs, the yep. more turnout. And so we lose what being an artist is. Yes, so true. And, and it kills me because I'm like, you guys, I want to be like Macarva. Watch <laughs> Macarva videos. Like, you wouldn't even have cared, and she didn't do this. I mean, she was, I mean, like, she's Macarva, but... I mean, if she would have fallen out of a turn, you wouldn't have cared because she was so captivating. Whereas Absolutely. like now, you know, if someone falls out of a turn, like, they get so upset with themselves and then the audience. And it's just, it's hard. It's just hard. So, you know, I don't know. Um, for, at Art Emotion, we actually have acting as part of the curriculum. Fantastic. At all times, no matter what level you're at, because... We really try to push that artistry matters and it yes. matters most it matters most to the audience. Like of course. there's always gonna be a ballet main in the audience who's gonna yep. know everything about technique and you may disappoint them or you may not, but ninety percent of the audience is going to be looking at you from the middle of your body up and yeah, they right. your performance. And exactly. they're paying your bills. Yes. Very good point. Absolutely. So I mean I don't know. It's, no, it can, I totally get you. It makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah. so how old were you when you went on point for the first time? Guys, I was nine. Okay? Wow. And that's not typical. So don't be like, no, Allison went I on agree. point at nine. I need to be on point at nine. No. Absolutely. So like I said, ballet just was very natural for me when I was little. Um, I, I, I was strong and, and, you know, I was on point early, but it's because I could do the things that I that were needed to be done at that age. And I was also very obsessed with ballet. So I was dancing even at that young of an age. Um, I would get home from school at four and I'd be at ballet at 430 and I would be there until 930 at night. And I was only nine. Wow. So I was training a lot. But again, like my mom didn't push me. I literally was obsessed. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Um, so. so when you did go on point the first time, what was it like? Can you remember that day? Uh, yeah, so I remember I still have my point shoes and they're Chakots. Oh, yeah, I remember. And they were like the true ballet pink, like not oh, the yeah, pink. Oh, yeah, I know. They're very Barbie pink, actually. Yeah, Barbie <laughs> pink. And 
Um, I love them, and I I wrote on them um, my first pair of white shoes, but I I spelled it P E A R because that was only oh. nine, so I I, I oh. spelled it like the fruit. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I just always dreamt of them. You know, it was like the best day of my life. Did and, it come like um, a second nature to you, point work? Can you remember what your first point classes were like? Um, like like I said, I did not realize that ballet was difficult until I had quit and come back. So I think like I was blessed when I was younger. I just was able to do things and I I you know, I was I'm also like like my brain works sort of I don't know how to explain it, but um in like a, a science a scientific kind of way where it's like how I approach the work like makes sense on like on different levels. So if like somebody started to explain to me like how do you shift your weight, like I understood what that meant. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's also why maybe at a young age like I was able to move up a little quicker is because I could like dive into that technical aspect of it a little bit differently. Sure. I'm not sure. But I don't remember feeling overwhelmed by it at all. It just kind of, you know, happened. That's cool. Um, so when did you go into um, Grishko or should I say Nikolai Point Shoes? Like, how long ago was that? Was it a long time ago? So as soon as I came back to ballet as um, a high schooler, so 11th grade, I was immediately in Grishko's. So oh, I wow. have... Um, yeah, I have pretty narrow feet, um, but uh -huh. they're also very, very flexible. Uh -huh. um, and so Grishko's just always suited me. Yep. Um, and um, like one of the things that I never get are blisters, you guys. Like I don't get them. And it's because my shoes fit my feet well. Exactly. I always say you this know? to people, like you don't need to worry about all of these problems if your shoe fits correctly and works with you, not against you. Yeah. Um, and it's astonishing the amount of dancers that come to me in really bad shoes and their feet are so battered. Um, even, I mean, even Grishko Nikolai point shoes can be fitted incorrectly. Don't get me wrong. I've had a few dancers that are in, say, the wrong shank or too long a shoe or too wide or too narrow or whatever else. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's astounding. Like, you know, once you find a shoe that works with you, what a difference it makes because then the dancer doesn't have to worry about it. You know, it should be a tool for the dancer, not something they struggle with right right i mean i i totally agree i mean the only thing that i um get um and it's like if my feet start to swell um then like sometimes my toenails will start to get bruised if i'm on point for a really long time but also i wear my shoes super dead which i don't i am not telling people to do it's just sure. at my at my level and how i like to wear my shoes i like to wear them so that they're soft I get you. Do you know what? You know. I could probably give you some great advice. Do you know what I want to do? After this stream, I'll arrange um, a virtual thing with you because I'd love to help okay. you out. Um, so tell me a bit about the models of um, Grishko and Nikolai Point Shoes you've worn and what model is your favorite at the moment? Okay, so I um, started with the 2007s. Yep. And um, then I switched to Nova's. Uh huh. And so I've been wearing Nova's for years. Like, I don't even know. I couldn't even tell you the exact amount of time. But then after I had my baby, my feet did get bigger. Of course. Uh -huh. um, so I was fitted into Allure's and I was wearing those for a little bit. And then all of a sudden, I don't know if my hormones changed again. Like my feet shrunk back to what they were normally. Just so to let guys back... know that um, Allure's are actually Dream Point 2007. But it's because the old US distributor had to rename them to Allure's. Um, just so people are on the same track, but yeah, sorry, carry on. <laughs> no, so, um, but now I'm back in, in Nova's, back into my old shoe. Sure. Uh, so, and I, I love them. I mean, I, I'm always open to like try any of your guys' new shoes because yeah. you never, you know, like I, the only thing that, um, I actually don't get too much done to my shoes either. Like I'm pretty much a stock girl. Wow. Um, yeah. But because I, um, have really narrow feet the only yep. thing i would really honestly love to talk to you about is like having a box that was bigger yeah do you know what um i watched your fitting with pat's dancewear on youtube and yeah. it's great for me as a fitter because i was looking and i was coming up with ideas as i was watching it um anyways in what you can do in a custom is you can actually make the platform bigger by up to 20 percent and this is what i do in my customs um, another thing that we do is we can actually make an entire last now 
um, to suit that dancer. So they can actually have their own truly personalized Nikolai point shoe, which, you know, they can pick a last that they like and then adjust the whole last, which is amazing. Um, yeah, not I, would die, I would die for that. So um, we just did Giselle at Ballet West and um, I was Mirta. And so Corinna Verti, um, she came and she coached us and she was looking at my shoes and she's like, how do you turn on those shoes? How do you balance in those shoes? And I was like, you don't understand. My feet are so narrow that like if I get a wider I'm width in any capacity, it doesn't fit. You know, um, <laughs> and I do not darn. Okay. I hate no, sewing sure. in general. No. I'm not uh -huh. darning. I, shoes. I can understand. So, so I would love to talk to you about that. Oh my God. I could make you the best shoe ever. So yes! you know what? You're narrow like me. I'm a one X. So I'm super narrow, English go Nikolai shoes. Um, so this is what I personally do to solve mine. Um, I wear two different models at the moment. I wear 3007 and I wear Maya 1. Um, so typically speaking, the Maya 1 has a bigger platform anyway because the shoe is semi-tapered. Um, this is a Nova. I just wanted to speak to guys about this. With the Nova, it has an oval platform and a low profile. And the platform is quite small even in the wider ones. Um, obviously we can custom it and we can add 20% width. Um, and of course we can do a custom last as well. But um, personally I find that just in special order, just adding that extra 20% when I'm already so narrow makes such a difference. Um, mm. Obviously I'm not a professional, but <laughs> um, when, I've done it for other people, <laughs> when I've done it for other people, they're like, oh my God, I can balance better. I can turn better. So, um, you know, for people that don't want to darn, it's a godsend. Honest to God, it makes such a difference. Because like you, when I was in a 1X width, I'd be like, oh my God, you know, my balancing on point feels really different because it's so small. Um, and of course, for people watching that don't know, the um, platform is determined by profile height and the shape of the box and the width combined. Um, Mr. Grishko just wrote um, a comment here. He says, um, Dear Alison, thank you for the beautiful gift to your talent. I personally would like to invite you to become a Grishko, um, Nikolai Grishko International Brand Ambassador. Oh my God, wow. Um, I hope yeah, that, that would will, be amazing. I, I hope that you will accept from Nikolai. Yes, Mr. Nikolai. Thank you, Mr. Grishko. Yes, I would love that. I've that is so cool. I've always wanted, because I've been following your journey for a long time. Um, and do you know what it was back in February actually do you know, remember when I messaged you about the fakes yeah um because I was I was hoping that you weren't in them I was like panicking a bit I was like oh my god I hope she knows um so when I back then I was like hey wait a minute why she should be one of our ambassadors because you know <laughs> she's been wearing them for so long <laughs> I mean I yeah I can't get out of them I mean even if somebody tried and you know what's really funny I have to say this so every director in a company you know they have point shoes that they like to see people in and um everybody said to me um that when i got into ballet west that you know adam and, or pam would be like no grishkos no grishkos you know and it's like why they never ah. said that <laughs> nobody ever said that i was like you know like because you know why like grishkos they you have to be strong to wear grishkos well, actually, nowadays you don't. You know what? This is something I'm educating people about is, okay, years ago, our shoes were typically quite hard. But now we have so many different pastes and shank shrimps and different models. Um, for example, we even have shoes with elastic paste that are more softer in the box. And we even have shanks that go to like Proflex and Super Soft and even our Fermo shanks, which are pre-arched. Um, so nowadays, obviously back then, I totally understand it was very different. The shoes were oh, but harder. I love that about it. I love when you are offered a shoe that requires you to work. Mm-hmm. I am. I'm, that's why I've been obsessed with Grishko's. I, I just think, love that. Do you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, and it's like... When you have to take responsibility. Yeah. On point, like you were saying, like working every part of the foot. Mm -hmm. And when you, at a, even at a young age, are put into a Grishko shoe, I don't know, I kind of felt like I understood my responsibility. You don't, you don't just get up on point. No, exactly. And you know what? This is what's funny when sometimes you fit first timers because they seem to think they're going to put the shoe on and just be away with it and go and dance on point. <laughs> no. And 
for the ones that are weaker, um, obviously I really take into consideration what shank strength I'm putting them in because I don't want to go too hard that they can't work with it, but I don't want to go too soft that um, it doesn't give them any support. So this is where some fitters go wrong is they just bang everybody in the same shank and it just, it doesn't work. No. Um, for example, the and first- you know, like, I don't know, I want to say like, I remember an evolution of shank um, hardness. Like I was, I started in a hard shank. Oh, wow. You know what I mean? Like you wear the young... mediums now, don't you? Yeah, I do. And I, I prefer the mediums, like I said, because um, here, here's what I love about like the medium shank for me is, um, so I like when the box gets really, really soft so that we can roll through our foot, like around where the bunion is. Yeah, um, yeah. But the medium shank for me is like perfect. Um, so when I start to get like, allow my shoes to get a little bit older, um, and the, you know, like the box is really, really soft. Like my shank is still supportive enough for part yes, of Yes, I get what you mean. Yeah. So, I mean, that's why that combination for me matters. Totally. Um, so. And also know. with, um, just to let the viewers know that when professionals are wearing shoes on stage, um, they sometimes, some dancers may switch between shanks depending on the role they're dancing. Yes. But also what is very important to the professional dancer is that their foot looks good. Like you have yeah. to showcase that line. And when we're speaking about the line, like some dancers that are professionals that are in the wrong shoes, you will know about it. Because as the audience, you will see beautiful leg line, then a bulk of a shoe that does not look part of that line. And it can be very unsightly. Um, so it should be about creating lines and it should be pleasing and it should also showcase the dancer's arch. It should look part of her. I yeah. always say that your shoe is part of your foot. It shouldn't be that, you know, oh, I've got a pointy one and I can really notice it. It should, from afar, it should look beautiful. Um, and that's, and that's always they work for me is with the, with the narrow foot, I always felt like the Grishkos just kind of fit. Yes. You know what I had a problem with, right? My very first pair of point shoes, which were another brand, um, they put me in a shoe really wide and they said, oh, how does it feel? And I was like, well, my big toe is on the ground. And they said, oh, that's okay. You're just feeling the floor. Oh my God, these shoes, they were horrific. No. I no. was sliding down, literally yes. just sliding down. And this shop had been there for 40 years, right? And they claimed that they know what they're doing. And as a first timer, you just don't know what you're meant to feel. So you go with what they tell you. Yeah. Um, and I ended up with a toenail falling off. And I was only a first timer. That it just isn't okay. No. Um, and when I got put in the right shoe, um, it was different because I had to learn how tight it has to be. And that was really bizarre for me because I didn't understand. Yes. Um, so whenever I fit a first timer, I always try to educate them on the importance of how firm it has to be. Because, of course, as, you, as we both know, when it breaks down, it gets wider. And we've got to yeah. ensure that it's snug to start with. Yes. Um, Another thing I noticed about your fitting video was um, I think your feet might be a little bit compressible in the metatarsals um, because like me, you was wearing um, a toe spacer between your big toe and second toe. Yeah. And usually feet like that tend to have very um, more flexibility in the metatarsal area. So when the foot is flat, it looks wider. But when they put a point shoe on and they go on point, the foot squishes down and they start to get some motion of the foot going downwards. Yes. Um, and sometimes, you know, they get their shoe on and they're like, oh, hey, the whip feels great. And then they wear it a few times and they start to have that problem and um, put a box liner in or they start trying different padding to try and sort the pain out that they're getting. Um, but there's a few good models and also a few good remedies we can do in custom. But also, um, oh, there's loads of things I can speak about. But I don't want to bore people. But <laughs> no, I mean, but it, it matters because to have somebody who knows is helpful. And... Um... I'm open to any suggestions you have to improve um, my, my shoe. And the thing is, is that, you know, I, from a dancer's perspective, um, as you get stronger, improve your technique, um, your shoe might have to evolve with you because yes. like, like we were talking about earlier with making sure the back of the knee is very straight and the front of the arch is pushing out. I mean, that's a line leg differently than maybe how, like first started so it's like you know all of that matters when you take into a, a shoe into consideration when you're up on point exactly um, you know so you might not wear the same exact shoe no time. i always say to dancers even those that are hobbyists you must get a fitting at least once every six months because wow. so much can change in those six months i've i mean oh my god the other day i had one of my younger dancers really tiny feet 
And she, oh, she has grown so much within yeah. a few months and her feet have got wider. Her insteps have got more muscular because she's getting more strength. So there were so many changes. Um, and I knew roughly with lockdown currently on, I could just send her some shoes to try it with a virtual fitting. Um, but yeah, it was really important that she came forward and told me, you know, oh, you know, I've definitely grown because just seeing her feet, there's so many differences. Um, and also, you know, there are different things that we have to take into consideration when fitting and it's stuff like hypermobility as well. Um, and if someone's got that hypermobility everywhere or have they just got it in their ankles or their knees, sway backs, you know, all of this, this all comes into play when we're thinking about a point shoe. Um, and, you know, sometimes with the really hypermobile dancers, they can be very flexible but very weak at the same time so they've got to work on the strength so sometimes you would give them a shoe that is going to help get their alignment correct but also build their strength so that when they come back to you for the second pair you can feel the shoe analyze what's happening and look how much strength they've gained and then start thinking about differences in shanks or even a custom order for some of those kind of dancers absolutely yeah um so just... lucky to have you Oh, it's frozen. Hang on. There we go. Um, so also, did you ever come into contact with uh, the fake Grishkos that were um, that are still going around? Uh, no, because um, Pat's dancewear in Utah, they've been around for years. Thank God. Um, <laughs> God right. I mean, um, no, they nip that in the bud. So I always, it I want to fly. Yeah, I'm so thankful. And actually... Um, so myself, um, Emily Adams, who's a principal ballerina at Ballet West, um, Gabby, uh, Gabrielle Salvato, who's a demi soloist at Ballet West, look, just as an example, all three are Grishko. And oh, cool. Whooped in and um, made sure we had the right shoes. Thank goodness for that. I, Phew. They were <laughs> hard for us. And, like, I'm so thankful for Pat's and, you know, um, that Nikolai was able to, you know, work with them right away so yeah we never thank had god for that yeah for those of you not aware i mean obviously i've bashed on about it in so many live streams but hey maybe you're new to my streams let me just talk to you about this it's important um so there are fake um shoes being made under our name of grishko they're not real grishkos our name for america is nikolai which is mr grishko's first name and it was very important for us to take all of you guys into consideration and help you get the same point shoes you knew and loved that were actual Grishkos, which are now Nikolai's for you guys, from the Russia factories with the high quality materials that we use, but also give you access to a broader range because you never used to get the range that you're going to get now through Nikolai, but also the dance wear. Um, and when you have a shoe, I mean, some of your stores might have old stock that were old real Grishkos. But anyway, from now on, um, it has been for a long time now, any new stock will have Nikolai here instead of Grishko. Um, and the important part is, is it will say handmade in Russia like mine do. It won't say just handmade, it won't say anything else, it will say handmade in Russia. So if you're on the fence, if you have any questions about that, please just ask because we will help you out and find you your nearest retailer. Um, also, speaking of Pat's dancewear, I must get them on for a Meet the Nikolai retailer stream on my on the Nikolai Instagram. That would be great. We must do that. You guys, they really, really care. And um, just like you. I, you know I loved her attention to detail and I love the fact that she asked you all the vital questions and she really took her time with the sizing and, um, you know, telling you about the information of the models, which is also so important. Like, you know, because dancers don't know everything about point shoes, you know, right. just because they dance doesn't mean that they know all the little informations. And obviously it all varies between brands and it all varies between models. I mean, us as a brand alone, we have over like 12,000 variations in shoes. Yes. Yeah. Um, guys improve and make changes all the time and it's hard for us to keep up with that so that's what exactly. you know like on like you or pats is important because they're like you know they actually text me and they're like you know nikolai has this new shoe this new do you want to try it they literally do that to me probably i don't know once every couple of months honestly that's amazing and I, okay let's do it you know so they're good it's so vital um like for you guys watching, you know, I often get emails saying they're not close to a dance store. You know, even if you have to make a day trip out of it, I cannot stress, try to get a proper fit in, right? If you can't do once every six months, do once a year, but you've really, especially for a first pet, please do not buy online. Um, I don't feel that you can virtually fit a first timer. I've seen apparently people do it, but I'm not up for doing it. I would never do it. 
Um, I always request if you're a first timer, you come to see me or go to a local fitter, you know. Um, but if you're already on point, you know, okay, it's sort of do um, if you're a real fitting, do a virtual one. But again, still every six months, try to get yourself to a real fitter because there are things we cannot see or feel through the internet. <laughs> so there's only so much we can do over a video call. Um, so just bear that in mind, guys. I know I get emails about it every day, um, but you know I'm super thorough and I just want to make sure everyone's safe on point. Um, so tell me about how you prepare your shoes because every, everyone does something different. Do you have any little secrets that you do to make your shoes wearable for you personally? This will help me gauge what I'm going to do with a shoe for you as well, actually. <laughs> I one thing. Um, I put alcohol, I spray alcohol, not water because water stains. Mm -hmm. I spray all, all along where um, the, you know, the metatarsal is where we yep. break. Yep. Um, and I hammer that down so that is um, as soft as possible to start with. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, I let my feet break my shoes in. Because um, if I like bend my shoe in, you know, like that, that might not be where my arch is. No, exactly. Totally agree so, with that. Yeah, so all I do honestly to prepare my shoe is I like I said, just try to get that metatarsal area as soft as possible to, to begin with. Mm -hmm. And then I, <laughs> yeah, right? I, I, I don't put it in a, I don't put my shoes in a door. No, 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 no. I, don't, I advise against that to anyone watching, by the way. <laughs> no. And so also, you know, like my boss, he, he really wants to make sure that we have soft shoes, like the meaning like that we don't have a loud noise on stage when we yes, jump. And of course. Stuff. Um, so, you know, some people think that means like banging your shoes on yeah, the ground. Yeah, we have options for that in Grishon Nikolai shoes, actually. The Pro option um, has sound absorption built in and the Pro Flex. But also we have in some models, it's already inbuilt anyways. But yeah, I noticed that some dancers will smash them on the ground or, you know, whatever. I don't, I don't do that. And I don't ever get the note that my shoes are loud. But that's like, I take a lot of like, I really try to roll through my feet, even when I'm jumping, you know, and so it's like, like I said, um, a lot of it is you have to take responsibility for yourself as well. And you can't mm -hmm. just be like, oh, that's my new shoe and my shoe is hard. No, like, you know. Absolutely. <laughs> that's why I think Grishko's work so well for me. It's like, I do not have to do a lot for them to just feel good on my feet. Mm -hmm. So that's it. But it's I would amazing. Like, when um for people watching that are maybe struggling to find the perfect shoe um if you are really fighting with your shoe and you're struggling you have any pains anywhere honestly nine times out of ten you're likely in the wrong shoe for you um so do reach out and get refitted honestly don't struggle it's not worth it sometimes you can keep fighting a battle that you're never going to win yeah and i mean why even do that when you guys have so many options exactly right you and that works so the other thing I wanted to mention is, um, of course, some retailers of um, Nikolai Point shoes don't have as many models yet, or they might not have as many shank strengths. But don't be afraid to ask them to get something in for you to try, because they will do that for you. And we have super fast turnaround times now, um, which is great. It means you get shoes quicker. Um, but also, we have so many models. We have, like, you know, different lasts and I've just put a recent video on YouTube all about the Fuate last where I went, I spoke for nearly an hour about it. That's how much detail there is. <laughs> so we really do have a, like a Nikolai shoe to suit everybody. And when I do a fitting personally, I often find four or five different Nikolai shoes that work for that one dancer. So it's actually pretty astounding the variety that we have. And don't forget, we can also fit men. Don't um, feel that the guys are left out. I've fitted plenty of guys before. Um, <laughs> Whereas goes. <laughs> um, so on this stream, we have, how, I think it's five minutes left on this one. Um, so it'd be great to do some more of these in the future. And also it'd be great to get you on here to do some classes for these guys. That would be amazing. Yeah. Um, so I heard me, but I said like my husband, he's a principal with Ballet West. He also wears Grishko. Does he? Oh, wow. Yeah. I never knew that. That's amazing. I yeah. think Mr. Grishko is watching this. That is super yeah. cool. How cool that you're both like, you know, dancers both married and you both wear Grishkos. That's incredible. <laughs> Does he have a favorite slipper that he wears? Do you know? I, I, there's somewhere around here. I'm not sure um, which one is his favorite, but I'm sure he'd be open. So he's got like, he's got pretty big feet. 
Uh-huh. Um, so, I mean, maybe you could even virtually fit him. Make yes. Because sure you guys, a lot of people don't know that men care just as much about how they their foot looks in a ballet shoe as us women do in a point two. Oh, God, absolutely. I agree. Sorry, I'm just, because the stream's already uh, ended early on my double stream. I'm just um, okay. sorting this. And then we'll reboot it. For, um, do you have to go urgently? Can you do another 10 minutes? Yeah. Fab, I'm just going to reboot it. Hang on a second. Sorry, guys. Technology. <laughs> oh, Marcel, she said happy Mother's Day. Honey, it's so good. I mean, so I know little, uh, well, not little anymore, but Darcel for so many years now, we met in Chicago when Ballet West was on tour at the um, um, Auditorium Theater and we met in person. So it's good to see you on Darcel. That's amazing. Uh, so um, on this stream, um, we're going to have to reboot it because it's going to end okay. in a couple of seconds. So everyone watching, please come back. Um, we're just going to reboot because it boots you off after a certain amount of time. Um, so please come back, go back to the page, refresh it, and we'll rejoin. So see okay. you guys in a moment. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Yay, we're back. <laughs> I hate it when it only allows you an hour. It's so annoying. No. <laughs> um, by the way, is, your, is Rex around? Um, he's welcome to come on if he likes. So I tried to tell him to at least pop in and say hi, but he's upstairs with my son. Aww. And if we if we have Ajax also down here, it'll just be chaos. But oh, maybe we I can understand. plan a time that um, he can be in with me or, or with you alone yeah, or something. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> we'll have to do another one sometime soon where you can both be on. And we could do, I'd oh, love we could it. do a double Q&A. How cool would that be? That would be really cool. <laughs> um, so tell us a little bit more about Art in Motion, by the way. Um, promote it. Tell us everything about it that we need to know. Okay, so we started Art Emotion in 2014. And um, as it stands right now, while um, Rex and I are still dancing professionally for Ballet West, we just have summer intensives for students and adults um, mm -hmm. and master classes, um, mostly during the summertime, US summertime. Mm -hmm. So for people that, um, Ballet West's uh, typical season, now mind you right now, this is a very strange time. Usually it's around July until the end of May. So um, for all of June and half of July, we do summer intensive. So um, we have an adult summer intensive that's always a week long. And we then we do a three week summer intensive for students. Um, and uh, then we do what we call a choreographic workshop. And oh, we're, wow. uh, yeah, we're in partnership with Valley West for that. So. Um, we do like a 19 to 20 city audition tour every year with Ballet West Academy. Uh -huh. So kids who audition are placed either in Salt Lake City at the Ballet West Academy, um, three or five week intensive, or they're placed with us in Cleveland for three weeks or uh, the choreographic workshop. And what's amazing about the choreographic workshop is um, Rex and I have, you know, you know, we've been with the company for a really long time. And what we notice is, amazingly talented young dancers get into the company as apprentices and they are so talented amazing but what they lack sometimes is the ability to adapt to what company life is actually like sure so they struggle with the intensity struggle with um i don't know the um how do i explain just the variety of what we do so i mean we're a classical ballet company ballet west is a classical ballet company but we do so much contemporary work um brand new work is is made on us um, every season so the choreographic workshop is only 45 dancers the the um the most uh i don't want to say promising dancers that audition on the audition tour we see about a thousand dancers but the kids that are just about ready to head into the professional realm end up with us for two weeks. And we have company class every morning. And then we move into six hours of rehearsal on a world premiere that they get to perform oh, wow. um, at a venue downtown Salt Lake City. Um, and Adam Sklu, Ballet West Artistic Director, and Peter uh, LeBreton Mertz, who is the uh, Ballet West Academy Director, um, they watch the show. And from there, um, they, they take trainees into the company. Wow. Um, so last year, 15 of our students um, ended up as trainees with Ballet West, and three of our students were just offered um, Ballet West 2 contracts. Oh, so wow. it's an amazing opportunity. Yes. 
So um, that's 45 dancers. And then our Cleveland intensive, we only accept 100 dancers. So we keep the program very small. We keep the classes very small and we work extreme detail in technique. So um, anything that needs cleaned up to head into like a more, um, a quicker paced environment, that's what we do. So we slow things down, um, but these kids get to perform. So we actually had Romeo and Juliet um, planned for this summer, but um, unfortunately our Cleveland intensive has got to go virtual this year. Uh -huh. um, so we're doing still the same three weeks, um, June 15th through July 3rd, and it's all virtual, but we've decided we've, um, We've planned a virtual performance, so we're still going to do Romeo and Juliet, oh, and we amazing. have designed. Yes, we've designed this amazing way to get this done and to keep these kids engaged um, and creative. Uh -huh. um, and then our adult week is June first through the sixth, and that's also going to be virtual this year, just because oh. of COVID nineteen restrictions. Um, and that's open to beginner, intermediate, and adult. Oh, uh, or fancy. advanced. Yes, so there's classes in every level. We have different sessions for time zones because we wanted to allow oh, anyone yeah, to participate. And we have teachers from around the world. So just as an example, uh, Marge Hendrick, who's a principal at the Scottish Ballet. Um, John Ole Olstad, who's in Norway. He danced with Netherlands Dance uh, Theater. He's our contemporary teacher. Uh -huh. uh, Megan Fairchild, New York City Ballet, oh, wow. principal ballerina. Um, Catherine Morgan. I mean, uh -huh. so we were able to invite teachers from around the world to teach because it's virtual. Yeah, so we hope people, um, you know, consider joining us. Sounds great. I will promote this on my social media for you as well. Thank you. Um, sounds really good. I'll um, send you the photos, the artwork. Yeah, send me all the info. Um, so we've actually got, um, uh, we've got NG Generation program, which is um, for the younger ambassadors of the brand. And Liv Brooke, who is part of Ballet West Academy, she is um, one of our ones as well. Um, Liv's watching, so, I think. Hi, Liv. Just so you know, Olivia ended up at Ballet West Academy because we invited her to the choreographic workshop no, last right, year. No, right, that's amazing. I never knew that. Yeah, so, so cool. um, Adam Sklute saw her at YGP in Toronto. Uh huh. And he immediately emailed me and said, there's this gorgeous dancer um, who is already so mature. He was so impressed with her artistically. And that's what I love about um, my boss in Ballet West. It's just, he does care about artistry still. I mean, he's so demanding when it comes to technical aspects of, the, of, of our work, but he says, you know, just dance. And so he was so impressed with Liv and he emailed me and he said, we have to invite her to the workshop and we did. And she ended up at the workshop she performed and um, Peter and Adam invited her to be a trainee um, or she might be a PTD this year, but I think she might be a trainee next year. I'm not really sure of how it worked out mo moving into year two. Um, but yeah, she's at Ballet West Academy year round now. Yeah, I got to meet her in LA because I went to the um, Atlantic Dance Retail Show with Nikolai and um, got to meet some of the ambassadors there. It was super cool. Um, it's, it's so great, like through this brand, being able to meet and connect with so many different dancers and getting to hear their stories and also, you know, giving, getting the chances of theatre to give them advice as well. It's just been absolutely fantastic. Um, it's really, you know, amazing to have the opportunity to be able as a brand to connect also our ambassadors around the world because we've got them yeah. everywhere. Um, yeah. It's just fantastic. So for you guys watching, um, go and head over to, I'll put the comment here so you know it. It's called NG Generation. And we do host um, applications every year, usually in the fall, where you guys can apply to become one of um, our NG Generation, girls or boys, by the way, not just girls. Um, yeah, hang on a second. Now my screen, oh, there you go, that's better. I can see more easier. Um, so with regards to like future goals, do you have any like personal future goals um, as a dancer or, you know, not just dancing, but anything else? Yeah. So um, after coming back from Ajax, I well, prior to Ajax, um, I started feeling like I kind of hit the end of my road in terms of professionally. I felt like, you know, like I'm getting older, like I said, I'm 36. And I started feeling like, you know, I would never be able to, to um, achieve a principal dancer. And um, after having Ajax, after you have a baby and you decide to work to get back on stage, 
I sort of had a fire under my buns ever since. And I was like, no, why would I do that to myself? You know, why would I decide that that's as far as I'm going to go? So professionally, until the day I retire, I'm going to work towards principal dancer. Yes, um, love it. And whether, and whether or not I get that or not, it doesn't matter. It's just about... But at least about... you tried. And at least you took that, you know, because you get that one shot in life, right? So why not exactly. go for it? Exactly. You know? I mean, I have to retire knowing that I gave 100% of myself at all yes. times. Absolutely. And I lost that before Ajax. And now after I feel even more motivated. Um, and also beyond that, just with art emotion, um, there's a lot um, to say about uh, ballet and um, traditionally how things are handled in the studio. And um, that's a whole other conversation. But I do believe that my generation of professional dancers who are now becoming directors of schools and directors of companies, um, I think we understand that there has to be some changes made in terms of how things are handled. Mm -hmm. And um, for me, professionally, in terms of a school, I know Rex and I really hope to um, either have our own school or run a professional school in oh, some wow. capacity. Um, and we're dedicated to a healthy environment. And that, yes. doesn't, that doesn't just mean technique, that means mental health mm -hmm. and how we approach our work. So I wanna, I wanna say this, um, we see 100 kids in Cleveland, we see 45 kids at the choreographic workshop. And it is unreasonable um, to expect that all 145 of those dancers are gonna become professional. And yes. they're also in different times, you know, they're in different places in their lives. And there's a million different reasons why they're even in the studio to start. Yeah. So absolutely. the very, the very first question we ask on the first day of every summer intensive is who wants to be a professional ballet dancer and everybody raises their hands. Okay. 145 kids. And I say to them, okay, guys, let's be honest with each other. It's okay to be honest. It's okay to say you're not sure. It's also okay to be 100% sure that you don't want to be a professional dancer. Yes. So let's, let's start again. So then like maybe half raised their hand. I said, okay, <laughs> what you're going to learn being here will make you the best at anything you do. So even if you yes. don't become a professional ballet dancer, being in the studio will prepare you for a professional career, a successful career. Yes. And I'm telling you, the work ethic immediately changes because the pressure is now taken off of keeping up in the ballet sense. So the kids who still have the goal of being professional approach the work in a certain way. But the kids who understand that the work ethic that they're gaining, that the camaraderie that they're gaining, understanding how to have self-respect, um, yes. respect for the teacher, respect uh -huh. for the people around them, they learn so much. And it, and it just opens the environment to a healthy environment. That's great. And that is where I'm at. And that's what I'll be dedicated to until the day I die um, as that's a ballet amazing. teacher. It's so refreshing to hear such, um, you know, nice modern attitudes to uh, dance in general. Um, by the way, guys, any questions, pop them in. Um, I'm just trying to read from this other screen as well. Um, so Coddy Kelly says, I will totally try and have my kids at your school. I am so grateful for what you do for the dance world. Um, Thanks, Alexa Cody. says that she's a ballerina. She started ballet at three years old and she loves it and she loves you too. That's adorable. Thank you. Let's see what else we've got here. Um, Liv Brooke has put some hearts. <laughs> oh, and Moth. Moth has said, is 13 years old too late to start ballet classes? Of course it's not. No. <laughs> There's no, no age. My husband didn't start until he was 13 and he's a principal ballet dancer. So there you go. Um, I mean, if that isn't inspirational, then, then what is, right? Um, yeah, no. this is reality. It's not, it's not a pipe dream anymore. It, no. it is what you want it to be. Absolutely. And if you invest, you could get something from it. So yes. um, I saw my stepdad. Thanks, Donnie. I love you. He said, happy Mother's Day. <laughs> love <Aww>. you, Donnie. <laughs> um, yeah, no, there's so, you know, even adults I get that, you know, they tell me they never got to do ballet as a kid, but they still dream of getting a pair of point shoes. Definitely. So, you know, I'm always... Um, you know, like to try and inspire them to uh, find a teacher they like and go to classes and get that confidence to go to class, yeah. first and foremost. But also to remind them that it's not an easy process, ballet, of course, as we know. 
but um, it shouldn't um, debtor their experience of what they can achieve and what they can gain from it. Because, you know, even there's stuff that I probably would never do on point, for example, but I'm okay with that because I enjoy what I can do and I just make the most of what I can do and enjoy it for what it is. I don't go and push myself to the extremes of getting injured, for example, like I sometimes see with adults with point work. Um, you've got to kind of know your limits, but also don't be afraid to strive for more because life is about striving for more, right? So um, um, I, I, I wanted to tell you this and um, I'd love to get you at the adult program in person next year when we're back to normal, hopefully. But um, we do a half day program, which is just classes in the morning. But if you um, do the full day program, you actually get created on and you perform. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, so brand new work. I mean, we bring in choreographers and they tailor it for the participants. And uh -huh. um, it's been incredible because the adult program in particular that week um, actually turns into like a therapeutic week where people who have been um, kind of either turned off from ballet or had a negative experience at some point in their life, they walk into the studio on Monday feeling that it's going to be like that. They feel like they're going to be judged. They feel like yes. they're not good uh -huh. enough. By Wednesday, we're all crying because they're realizing that those judgments just aren't there anymore. And they're there to love ballet again. Oh, that's and we, so nice. I mean, it's incredible. It's so inspiring for Rex and I. And, and all of our teachers involved. And then by Saturday, they're on stage performing and they feel like they have reached their goal. That and, is so um, good. And we actually invited a, there's a company in Salt Lake City. It's called Municipal Ballet Company. Uh -huh. And I know there are other companies like this. I know, um, so in, in Washington, D.C., I don't remember the name, but I know in Seattle, there are companies that are tailored for adult dancers who also have a full-time job in some other capacity. Yes. And they figure out a way to rehearse and they create content and they perform still. And it's like, yes, we have here's what I want to say. You said, you said this earlier about yourself. You said, I'm not professional, but, but the truth is, is that when it comes down to people auditioning and get a, getting a job, it is about like just there being a job. So millions <laughs> of dancers every year audition and they don't get jobs because they don't exist. I mean, this is the biggest problem. Like, there, we would love to have a million professional ballet companies, but non-profit organizations are hard to run as it is, and they're hard to sustain. Yeah. And just because you did not gain a professional contract doesn't mean that you aren't equal to anyone who is. Yeah, no, I get you totally. And you know what I, mean, I, also, what I also find with adult ballet world, especially, um, in the UK, for example, um, it's really sad the amount of stories I hear from adults that have, you know, emailed a school to join it and they'll write back and they'll say, oh, sorry, we don't take on adults. Um, but also the adults that actually want to learn syllabus work, for example, and how they're made to feel that it's not possible with their age, but it totally is. I mean, for example, last year I did my elementary exam in BATD and I did it with the 14 to 15 year olds. You know, yeah. there's, <laughs> there's no, people shouldn't be debted by that. So, no, I mean, for when we retire and we have a school of our own, our dream is to have like a, a concept school where um, during the day we would have like a very small amount of kids. So maybe 20 kids every year in like what we would call a pre-professional like program where they would do their academics in the morning and then spend the day with us. Cause this uh -huh. is what I did as a kid. Yeah. And then at night we would have an adult school. That would be amazing. Oh yeah. My I mean, we have all these plans and I promise you I'm a workaholic and I will make it happen. Um, if Love it kills it. me. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, tell us about when lockdown is over, what is like a typical day for you at Ballet West? Like how does your day usually pan out? So we have company class every day at 10 a.m. Um, it's an hour and a half. Um, so then we have a 15 minute break and from there we head into six hours of rehearsal every day. So we get done at 6.45 p.m. Um, and you know, Rex and I are uh, very, very fortunate. We do a lot of dancing. So typically we're at work all day, every day. Um, and we do, you know, we, we work, so Ballet West, um, is really, really cool. Like I said, we do so much, uh, you know, contemporary work. So we're not just doing full length. So oftentimes we are rehearsing more than one ballet at the same time. 
So like the ability to switch gears every hour has to be there. Um, but it makes us, you know, we're, we're very adaptable. You can throw us into any situation and um, we're ready for it. So I think that's really cool about Valley West. But yeah, we work Monday through Friday, um, six hours a day, hour and a half uh -huh. company class. And then when we're in performance weeks, we perform um, every day of the week sometimes wow. um, in some capacity. So usually earlier in the week, we do um, performances for school children as an outreach program on uh -huh. um, Valley West had started this amazing outreach program where we invite schools in um, for as field trips and we perform oh. and starting. Yeah, then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we're doing shows at night for audiences, sometimes two a day. So um, yeah, I mean, we dance a wow. lot. We go on tour. I mean, I'm right now it just sucks because obviously we're not in the studios and we're not performing, but we're really hoping to get back on stage in August. Of course. So like with all this um, dancing um, as a professional, how do you keep your stamina up? Do you have any like secrets regarding your diet or anything else? So um, Rex and I both like to cross train at the gym. Oh, yeah. Um, so I actually run on a treadmill. Um, and um, I was told, I don't know, uh, there's a dancer. Well, he's retired, but his name is Jaime Diaz and he, um, you can find him on Instagram. It's ballet, fitness, and coaching. But um, we actually hired him to come into Salt Lake for two weeks um, last year at the very beginning of the season before we started because I needed to get back in shape after my baby. Um, but he actually told me to run intervals on a treadmill. Ah. So what I do is I walk for five minutes at like a four pace. And then yeah. I run for a minute, walk for a minute, run for a minute, walk for a minute. I do that for about like um, about a mile. Oh, wow. Uh, but my husband does the elliptical, but we also lift weights. We love lifting weights. Um, we also do gyrotonic. Oh, um, yes. It's changed I've my life. About that. I would recommend it. I, I never really was into Pilates or anything like that. I didn't, it just didn't, Sure. wasn't good for me. Um, but gyrotonic changed my life. I did it during my entire pregnancy and after. Yeah. Um, so that's how we cross train. As far as our diets go, um, we want to set an amazing example for our son. So we actually eat a well-balanced diet and it's healthy, but we, we don't always eat healthy. Sure, like I think it's on, I don't think it's like, I could never a hundred hours of my life a day, like 24 hours a day, seven days a week, eat as clean as can be. That's like yeah, unreasonable to accept. So we eat well-balanced meals, um, a lot of proteins um, of every kind. Um, a lot of fruit and vegetables of every kind. And we just kind of live our lives that way. Yeah. Um, and we, you know, first of all, I'm really bad at drinking water. That's the uh -huh. one thing my husband has to force water on me, but drink a lot of water. Um, but, you know, I'm still breastfeeding. So it's also important for me to be healthy for, for my son. Uh -huh. um, so we don't diet here at our house. Uh, do you have any like favorite treats that you really enjoy? Um, like food wise or just like, or dessert wise, um, food and dessert wise. Um, so in our house, we like homemade cookies and my sister actually, um, she's living with us right now because she nannies, um, our son while we're at work. Um, so she actually bakes a lot of homemade cookies, but we use almond flour. Oh yeah. Uh huh. For example, we, we use a lot of coconut oil and brown sugar. Yes. So we kind of get our kicks in in that way. We yeah, don't yeah. Um, just refine sugar or white flour or anything like that. So we do a lot of cookies here. But um, actually, my son is obsessed with just like, we use an instant pot. Okay, yeah, you guys, yeah. because we, we work so much like between Artie Motion and Valley West. We work. Um, but we do um, like chicken breast, um, not breast, I'm sorry, like chicken thighs, because they're like a lot, they just cook better uh -huh. with vegetables rice and um and chicken broth and we put it in the instant pot so we eat that often it's like one of our favorite things to eat but we feel like we're getting a lot of nutrients in when sure, we do that instant pots are great. Um, yeah but i'm also <laughs> italian so ah. I, yeah we i'm italian and serbian so we eat a lot of ah. like food um yeah i mean we love everything here <laughs> i love it great <laughs> Um, do you have any advice to give to the dancers that are, you know, dancers that are in lockdown still? Um, any like vital piece of information and maybe promote the classes that you're offering as well? 
Yeah. So my, um, my advice is to listen to your body and to, and to your mind. So I know like we're into seven weeks of being in quarantine here in the States. I don't know where, how you are right now. Um, but what I'm starting to see is that people are getting tired of not having like interaction personally with people. Um, and I get it. So if you need to take a break, take a break. But remember, um, we are going to end up back in the studios in person. And in order to do that safely, we need to stay strong. Mm -hmm. So um, you can't just pop back in the studio and start Grand Allegro, like as business as usual, you exactly. will get injured. Yeah. So um, we're just asking people to try to push through that mental block of feeling disconnected. Um, so one of the things that we do with Art Emotion with our open classes, so every Saturday we do open classes open to the public. Um, and we, uh, with corrections. So it's with us on Google meet. So oh, it's not yeah. just an, it's not just an open class that you get for free where you're not yeah. able to talk to the teacher, uh -huh. but we actually encourage kids to unmute themselves, talk to us, ask oh, us wow. questions. And even in the summer intensive, what we're going to do is allow the links to stay open after class. So these kids can get to know each other and talk. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, yeah, and even the virtual performance we have planned for the student intensive. So we're, like I said, we're going to do Romeo and Juliet. We're going to ask them to work into groups of five and produce work together that we're going to ah. put together for a film and yeah. we're going to post it. So I know it feels weird. I know it feels disconnected. Um, but we can still create art from this and everlasting art. And we're never going to forget how this feels. And it's a, it's going to be, I mean, I never thought in my lifetime I would ever be a part of something like this. Like right. this is history that we can put our stamp on personally by Definitely. creating art that's going to be put out to the world. And so that's why my, I just feel, I don't think this is a horrible situation. I'm finding ways to stay engaged and our yes. emotion is as well. Um, so yeah, I'm just saying, trust your body, trust your mind. That's good, solid advice, I think. Um, Dolls of Horror says, any advice for dancers who are eating disordered? So, um, I am not a doctor, so I don't, I would be weary about giving like advice when it comes to that. But I do want to say that, um, I understand that, that sometimes ballet, um, can put pressures on us about how we look and, um, I hate that. I hate it. Um, all I can promise is that when I'm in charge and my husband are in charge uh, one day that we're not going to be like that. Mm -hmm. And I think that it is not fair um, to, to just understand that how we look um, is just a look. And by that, I mean, um, even for us right now. So we dance like literally eight hours a day. Professional ballet dancers dance eight hours a day, which means the amount of work and calories that we are burning is astronomical. So we have, to, we have to fuel our bodies in order to sustain that kind of work or we get injured. Yes. Um, what I think happens is that students in particular, they look at how we look and they don't understand why we look like that. Uh -huh. They just say, they just say, that's, that's how ballerinas look. That's how a ballet dancer looks. No, we, on top of dancing eight hours a day, also cross train. I mean, we are literally physical, probably 12 hours of our day. Wow. You don't look like that dancing a few hours a day. It's no, not possible. Absolutely. And so all I want to say to that is you guys, um, I'm here to educate you about how often we're dancing and moving. And that's why we look the way we do. Um, when you start to get into pas de deux work, especially, I do see like um, bodies transform once mm -hmm. you like higher rank dancers because of the work that we're doing, like the upper body transforms, everything starts to change. And there's a reason why we look the way we do. It's not just because mm -hmm. we don't eat. Exactly. That's, that's, that's total crap. And it's so hard. It's hard for me to even talk about. Um, yeah, I totally get so, what you're saying. It's really good information that you're giving, by the way. Yeah. And also, you know, if you don't fuel your body and you starve it of nutrients that it needs, eventually it's going to fight back and everybody gets, it fights back in multiple ways. And mm -hmm. you're not going to be a ballet dancer forever. And you really don't want to have problems with your health 
No, um, when you're older. Definitely not. Absolutely. Yeah. So, no, um, totally great information. And also, um, I often get, do you know what? I actually get accounts following me on Instagram where they are young, you know, under 18s, and they literally put in the title of their Instagrams that they've got like an eating disorder or whatever, and they're literally posting pictures of themselves like super, super skinny. Um, and looking for inspiration pictures and whatever. This could be a topic for another video, actually. It's, it's really yeah. sad and awful. Um, any of you guys watching that have problems like that, do seek medical and professional help. Um, and also just remember that, you know, if you do want to be a professional dancer, like Ali has said, like you have to look after your body and you have to get those nutrients and make sure you're looking after yourself um, in every way possible. Um, that's super crucial. And I, I want to say this too. So um, historically, you know, the the length of a career of a dancer, it used to be very short. But if you notice now, I mean, people are dancing into their 40s, into their yeah. 50s. Uh -huh. And um, if you look, if you really dive into why that's happening, it's because we've got so smart about how we're training our bodies outside of the studio and also how we're fueling our bodies. Yes. And I think that is why the longevity of our careers is growing Absolutely. and growing and growing. And you said, you know, you asked me way earlier, like if you feel like getting older is, is, is changing your body. And aside from having a child, I would say absolutely not. I don't feel like I'm getting slower. I don't feel like no. my muscles, my ligaments are... We're really are... lucky now because we have so much access to amazing, well, not just nutrients and food and professionals that help us, but also um, the fact we also have, of course, better point shoes as well, so our feet can be healthier. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I mean, so totally. Factors. And, like, the medical assistance we get now, if we get injured, there's so many incredible dance physios. And, God, we're so lucky now that professionals can have a longer career. Um, exactly. Gosh, it makes such a difference. Um, Alice has said, hi, your pointies are the best. I've got only Grishko since 11 years. Oh, that's really cool. cute. I'm glad that you <laughs> like them. <laughs> um, so we'll end this um, one in a couple of minutes, um, but we'll invite yeah. Ali back another time. I'm there's, sure there's plenty we can cover in different topics, but also she can um, join us with her husband and we can also do some streaming for classes as well. Sky's the limit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, so thank you to everyone who's joined. If you missed out, don't worry. I'm going to save it. And then tomorrow I will join the two pieces together for a YouTube video. But also I'll upload to IGTV and I'll send you the WeTransfer link so you can download it as well. Um, awesome. It's been really great. And I'm so thrilled that you're one of our ambassadors now. Like, it's been something That's, that I've I feel so honored. Long. Oh, my God. Yeah, this so is exciting. exciting. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I cannot um, wait. Mr. Grishko, thank you again if you're still out there. Um, <laughs> and also, um, Peter, thank you so much for connecting. And, and to you, Leanne, just, you know, we we virtually connected for a year now, but it's good to finally just talk. So Absolutely. It's amazing. And I look forward to our future collaborations. Um, to everybody that's been watching the whole thing, thank you so much for tuning in. We do frequent streams on with many different dancers, different topics. We also do on the Nikolai World Instagram page, which you must follow because we're the same thing. Nikolai is obviously our American name. So go and give them a follow, Nikolai World. We also have energy generation, don't forget, for the ambassadors. And someone asked earlier, I forgot to answer. They wanted to know how to become an NG generation participant. We, in the fall, we do um, like an audition, like an application, then a video. Um, it changes every year, but that's basically how you do it. So you have to wait till the fall. Um, but do keep in touch with us all. Give us a follow. Head to my YouTube as well. I'm going to promote it. It's youtube.com forward slash straight to the point. I've just put a new video up about the Fuate last and all the models built on the Fuate because I know you guys wanted to learn about it and I've gone super in depth. So you're going to need to get a comfy seat to watch because I go on and on. But hey, it means you learn everything you need to know. So, so it makes life easier. Um, awesome. Thank you everybody for joining us. Thanks thank for you. having us. Oh, Ali, do you want to um, just drop us, tell us about the website addresses for everything that you've got going yeah, on? So people um, check them out. I would just suggest to everybody to just follow Artie Motion USA. So it's right there in the pinned. Yep. Um, I'm Ali DeBona. My company that I dance for is Ballet West, and it's in there as well. But I direct Artie Motion. And everything is there, like, in our header with our website. It's kind of long. It's artymotionsummerintensive.com. Um, 
but I think that if they just follow us on Instagram, we always post about what we're up to. And, you know, if, if your school canceled your summer intensive, whether you're an adult or a student, we have a virtual option for you. Um, and also Ballet West is still going to move forward with an in-person intensive this summer. So they're still accepting video auditions until May 15th. So that's also an option. So between the two of us, there's something for everybody. Um, so just, yeah, start by following Artie Motion USA. And um, again, thank you so, so much. And I look forward to the future with Grishko and Nikolai. And um, I'm really grateful. Fabulous. Thanks so much okay. for coming on. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Um, and we'll see you, well, tomorrow, actually, on Nikolai World. I'll be doing Meet the Nikolai Retailer, um, as always. So feel free to come and check that out because you'll get to meet retailers in America that distribute Nikolai and learn about their stores. Um, so come over and see for that one. You will have to click the post of the time zones because obviously I'm in the UK, so there's no point in me telling you guys what time is in the UK. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, Bye, ciao. Everyone. Bye. Bye.